Extreme travel is inherently risky. Dangerous river whirlpools and ice avalanches on mountains, but what? Despite being impossible on Earth, if a wall of fire 500 million kilometers or larger gets in the path, it is feasible for the space probes to be affected. It's possible that Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 recently met a barrier whose temperature several times above that of earthly flames. After 45 years since their launch from Cape Canaveral, the Voyages have visited four distant planets, taken hundreds of scientific observations, and traveled beyond the solar system, where a real red-hot hell awaited them. However, recently, Voyager 1 started sending data that had scientists perplexed. What have they discovered about the Voyager's journey? How did the spacecraft manage to cross the terrifying wall of fire thus far, and why was the whole interstellar trip of the probes followed by the space probe's excellent level of protection, which includes multi-layer thermal insulation heat shields and plastic jackets, allowed them to survive the space environment with its terrifying radiation, freezing temperatures, and needle-sharp dust? The gentle rustle of rain for nearly half a century, probe equipment that made it all the way beyond the solar system has been functioning well almost constantly. Individual pieces of their defensive line are pretty modest, for instance, just before launch, some of the cables had strips of household aluminium foil taped to them as radiation shielding, and it worked flawlessly. When the probes were launched into space they were headed for Jupiter, Saturn, Neptune and Uranus, their voyages took many extraordinary images in addition to the iconic pale blue dot and volcanic eruption on Jupiter's satellite Io there are less known but stunning images. The amount of work and people put into the development and implementation of the project is about 11,000 years this is equivalent to a third of the effort expended to build the Great Pyramid of Giza. Check out this photo of the Earth and the Moon obtained by Voyager 1 as it approached Jupiter. In this photo, the Earth and its satellite seem to be two crescents traveling in the same direction. You can also see the edge of Titan's disk, Saturn's biggest satellite, which was photographed by Voyager 2. Then why are there two colors? It's only that the enigmatic haze appears blue at a height of a few hundred miles above the atmosphere. The atmosphere itself is orange in color and mostly made of nitrogen, with methane and maybe hydrogen and carbon molecules mixed in. The probes reach the edge of the solar system and then the edge of the heliosphere filled with solar wind. They entered the helioport region where the pressure of the heliosphere was high, and it is thought that this is what the Earth's atmosphere looked like before the emergence of life. After flying around the planets, the voyages turned off their cameras and some other devices to save energy. Scientists had anticipated that the magnetic field of the galaxy near the heliopause would be tilted in the direction of the solar magnetic field, but the probes discovered no change in the direction of the magnetic field and the particle density was 10 times greater than in a solar wind. Flows of solar and interstellar particles collide in that region at unimaginable speeds, making them glow and form a wall of fire, which is what astronomers refer to the phenomenon as, although it is unknown for what it is it would seem impossible to pass through this area and scathed, yet the probes were successful because the plasma turned out to be very thin and considerably smaller than the air on Earth's surface, preventing the probes from reaching dangerous temperatures. Since the heliopause is the solar system's last line of defense against deadly cosmic rays and interstellar dust, and because the heliosphere blocks about 70% of the harmful radiation coming from deep space, studying the red-hot wall is crucial for scientists. The wall of fire that the Voyages discovered most likely also plays a significant role in this, but we are still unsure of its exact nature. As the probes entered stellar space, they recorded various sounds we wouldn't have heard, but the instruments picked up the noise and transmitted it to Earth. At first scientists couldn't determine their source later they've been able to determine that the heliospheric bubble may have the shape of a donut or a croissant. If so, it will have gaps in it that astronomers will have to find. The probe kept its antenna pointed at Earth as mission specialists investigated the issue and determined the source of incorrect telemetry. It turned out that the information was transmitted through a computer that had long since stopped working and was corrupting the data before a command was issued. Voyager 1's telemetry started sending absurd data back to Earth. Telemetry is the measurement and collection of information to provide to the operator or user. The voyages will eventually lose communication with us, but they will continue traveling into interstellar space, mostly via nothingness. 
Only in approximately 30,000 years will the voyages pass through the Earth cloud, a ring of comets and icy debris that surrounds the solar system, and only in approximately 40,000 years will Voyager 1 be closer to the star Gliese 445 than it is to our Sun by the time Voyager 2 passes 1.7 light years from the red dwarf star Ross 248 of the constellation Andromeda. Looking even further into the future, in approximately 230 million years, the solar system and voyages. The half-life of plutonium-238 in the Voyager nuclear reactor is 87.7 years, and in a small area of the coating of uranium-238 it is 4.5 billion years, we can hardly imagine such a distant future, but scientists have painted us a rough picture at that time the Milky Way should already be colliding with the Andromeda galaxy. These records have excellent protection. If the voyages continue within the unified galaxy, the fate of the probes will rely on the same dust. If the probes enter a thick dust cloud, they have a very high probability of collapsing, although there may not be much dust since star formation would have essentially stopped by that point. Journeys will travel through a galaxy that is almost entirely devoid of main sequence stars, with the only objects in the universe being black holes, star remnants, white dwarfs, and neutron stars. Only the extremely rare flashes of supernovae will occasionally light up the sky in this hostile environment. Journeys will be able to wander for trillions and trillions of years. Other missions will investigate the solar system's periphery and interstellar space, and there are already some intriguing concepts for future spacecraft that will go there. NASA has developed the idea for an interstellar probe, which is intended to include numerous cutting-edge and dependable components. Among other things, the probe will be able to extensively investigate the solar wind and its use to sailing spacecraft.